Good evening, America. Welcome to Cross Country. We begin tonight among my peers, the young voters of America. Millennials and Gen Z get a bad reputation. Many believe they've been indoctrinated by the left-leaning influencers around them, college campuses, liberal media, woke online influencers. But as we prepare for the first GOP primary debate, the first hurdle of what already, what we already know is an eventful election cycle, we've learned that some of those young voters are looking for something different. They are looking for something beyond the obvious talking points. The ones that I've spoken to aren't partisan at all. They're looking for hope, hope for their future, hope for their country, and hope for their fellow man. So is there a candidate in the 2024 race that can rise above all the partisan politics and deliver on that hope? Well, we headed to the early primary state of South Carolina to find out. Watch. What is the number one issue for you in this next election? I think we need to stop spending money on unnecessary uh, excursions mm -hmm. and endeavors. What do you mean by that? I think that we definitely need to stop sending a lot of our financial foreign aid to Ukraine, uh, as well as a lot of these other like NATO countries and stuff. Gavin, what about you? Well, there's a lot of issues right now, but I'd say the most important would be the deep state. Mm -hmm. um, just seeing with ever since Trump was elected in 2016 how adamant they have been to try to go after him and uh, other political opponents. I think largely it's the economy. It's, for me, it's hard to see, you know, billionaires get not taxed their fair amount and that burden falls to the lower and middle classes. The abortion issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a pro-life Democrat. Um, and I Do they still exist? We, we still exist. <laughs> we still exist. It's so interesting that you have that point of view because there's a lot of polling that suggests that Republicans should stay away from that issue because it could hurt them, and you, you don't believe so. These are human beings being killed in our communities every day. And, you know, if there's any candidate on either side of the uh, political aisle that wants my vote, you know, they're going to have to face the abortion issue head on. Mm -hmm. Janae, what's the number one issue for you? I would say broken families is probably at the forefront. And I think that stems from this war on masculinity that we've been seeing. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that's due to, to the, a society just having this perspective on men as oppressors and not even giving them a fair chance in all aspects of life. No, that's the first time I've heard someone <laughs> say that's the number one issue. Why, why do you have such a passion for that issue specifically? Well, if you look at the numbers, suicide rates for men are three to four times higher than women, and 70 percent of men committed suicide, the percentage of suicides in 2021. So we have an epidemic on a depression, especially young men, and mm -hmm. I've seen them continue to fall by the wayside. Trevor, what about you? What's the number one issue? I would say immigration as a whole, both yeah. illegal and legal. Um, part of the reason why I like President Trump so much is because he's such a hawk on immigration. You mm -hmm. know, he wants to build the wall to keep these violent, you know, offenders out. And uh, we need to really put our foot down on that if we're going to, you know, get things done in this country. One of the things that was promised from this administration is to forgive student loan debt. Who's in support of getting rid of that student loan debt? Okay, so you're halfway there. So what do you mean by that? So I think there should be special provisions. I don't think outright it should be completely forgiven. However, I think that college is so expensive nowadays. There needs to be some way we can think about repaying these student loans off because, you know, we as, the gener as Generation Z, we're really struggling. I do agree with Trevor in terms of it is difficult to try to get money. Um, but there are options, there are scholarships, there are other ways that money can be obtained for the student. Um, but as far as forgiving student loans, I would try to keep that as a minimum. Because mm -hmm. it's, in the end, it does fall on the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. The taxpayer didn't take out the loan. Logan and Hayden, y'all raised y'all hand in support of it. Do y'all feel, feel let down in any way of him promising it and it not going into fruition? I feel like through the entire 2020 campaign, I was promised the world, and I've seen an effort to deliver on some of these promises, mm -hmm. and I think that that's become a real problem, is just we're so divided between all, of our, all three of our branches of government. Um, there is no unified force to get something like student loan forgiveness or even, you know, just relief done. My mother has raised myself and my sister by herself mm -hmm. for years, and she's a public school teacher here in the area. We have 
these people that have been paying on student loans for decades and still have thousand dollars of, of debt that are working hard in their communities. So I think they deserve to have their, their debt forgiven. Janae, I take it you disagree with the in theory, I would also love it. I've been working through college to try and keep afloat, but I think it would end up being a huge burden on the taxpayer. And after I graduate, that will be subsequently me and all of my peers. So I think college is definitely way too expensive. It's inflated. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But having it forgiven would just put burden on the taxpayers and in the long run I think it'll do more harm. The number two issue after the economy and inflation is crime in America and how it impacts uh, everyone. I see everyone shaking their head on this. Fish, uh, what is your view of crime and who you feel is the best candidate to address this issue? Well, at the moment, I don't know if we have the best candidate to uh, address this issue. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you take a look at our, our prison systems, like, like what are they? It's, it's, it's a financial burden on the taxpayer. I don't think we're tough on crime enough. I mean, you got all these um, attorney generals and DAs who don't prosecute these violent criminals, and they're back out on the streets within a week. I think being soft on crime is what's led to more crime. When you're hard on it and you know that there's ramifications for certain behavior, it is a strong deterrent for future such behavior. I think that we've created a society with the school to prison pipeline where the odds against young people, they're born into crime. You know, this it's hard to break that cycle. Trump and Biden, who all wants the rematch to happen? I'm here Just for Just a it. show of hands. Who wants of the rematch of Biden Absolutely. versus Trump? And who doesn't? DeSantis camp. Okay, you're team DeSantis right now, and I'm assuming all three of you are team Trump right now. Sir. Y'all don't want, you're Dem two Democrats on this panel, y'all don't want this rematch to happen. I feel, as a, as a 26 year old man, I have a hard time putting my faith in a man that's gonna be 86 years old when he gets out of office. We've kind of created this dynamic as a party right now where we're all in for Joe Biden, but this, there comes a time when it's time to hang it up. You know, once you get your health in the decline very, very quickly, mm -hmm. and it's that's just the challenge for me. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.